Wow, come everyone. Today we'll have an amazing spirit bomb build that is super fast, that poisons enemies, and that doesn't look back behind explosions. So this is one of the new Blink Strike spirit bomb build that is insanely fast. The moment you touch the enemies, you don't even have to look back. They will be dead on the screen. So look at the top of the screen. Let me just show you guys this. Look at the red dots. The moment you touch them, you don't have to look back. They are already dead. And this is one of the incredibly fast, fast damage and also utility and also speed farming build that the Chinese players are using to do all parts of the content. You can see this one, speed farming tier 100. And again, you can see over here, it is incredibly fun to play this build because you're walking around with poison AOE and you don't even have to hit enemies. We're literally dashing around with the Russian Claw and then let the poison do the work. Simply by rushing into a pack of enemies, they'll be dying in seconds. And this build is really fun to play and very easy to play as well. You have a lot of survivability, tons of damage, incredible mobility, and also just, just some really fun mechanics to play the poison setup like this, having so much barrier, and then dashing around everywhere you see enemies on the map. And the best thing about this build is you don't have to look back. Enemies will be dead the moment you touch them, and then you just move on to the next pack and the next pack. So this is a very fun take on the Spirit Bond, and I have to say, watching at this replay, and some of my friends have tried it, they are loving this particular build. It is incredibly speedy and great for any part of the content. Now, a lot of Chinese players have tried to use this build to push for higher pits, and they can easily do pit 130, 140, and you can see this is one of the demonstrations. I do apologize for the blur, but what I want to show you guys is, yes, this build can also explode minions. Look at the max HP buff at pit 130, and when this sinkers, it will disappear, simply because this build can do incredible amount of damage together with fast mobility. Now, so additional highlights for this build is that you can literally AFK in certain mode of the game, like the Hell type or maybe the Infernal Horde. And because you do so much poison damage and thorn damage, yes, you can AFK and just let your skills do the work. You don't even have to move. Notice that the entire map is killed within seconds before they even get to you. And this build is incredibly durable. So you can give your hands and also mouse fingers a rest and just pressing the buttons, you can see monsters will die around you. And yes, you can AFK with this build, which is pretty fun to do, right? So the Chinese players were demonstrating this part and they're literally standing in the middle of the hut and the infernal hut. And you can see the monsters are dying super fast around him. Now, similarly, additional demonstration for this build in terms of, you know, doing the Undercity, doing the Helltide, it is similar. It is incredibly fast, you have so much mobility, and you'll be dashing around and just literally killing enemies the moment you touch them. And that's the best part of build. You don't have to worry about damage, you don't have to worry about hitting them, you dash next to them, they're already dead. And this makes the build super fun to play, and a really good take compared to the Crow Volley, which I'm sure most of us are a little bored of. So now before we jump into the builder's guide, a big thank you and also credits to the Chinese content creator Fei Ye No Night. It is likely he's the one that created this particular build and a lot of other content creators are following his build. So we're going to go through his builder's guide and explain the mechanics and also the gears of choices for this build. Because you can see he's using a unique ring over here instead of using legendary rings. So coming over to the builder guide and after this video, I'll translate everything to you guys into English on the mobility's guide. So over here, we're using two mythical items, the Halloquin's Quest and also the Shard of Fourth Death. The Halloquin's Quest provides us with tons of cooldown reduction and additional skill ranks can be helpful for this build. The Shard of Fourth Death, the passive plus one is just incredible. And if you can roll onto additional life and this will allow you to do even higher damage. The final unique item we have is actually the Wood Drinker. Now, I haven't used the Wood Drinker myself personally, but it gives you tons of Thorn together with damage reduction from Thorn's enemies, which are not especially useful, but it also provides you with a bit of armor on the top FX together with a massive damage boost to poison enemies and a hefty boost to toxic skin skill level. And this particular ring also allows us to gain the toxic skin passive effect, which makes toxic skin one of a centerpiece of this build in doing damages as we work towards enemies and dealing thorns damage AOE. Now in terms of the other legendary aspects of choice, we have the two-handed to redirect force so we can get the highest critical damage. And here we have interdiction for higher block chance. Those are quite straightforward. We're getting unyielding hits so we can get additional armor that is translated into additional damage together with fell through Sayer, which allows us to explode vulnerable enemies for additional damage. Now having the menace aspects on the 
pens over here allows us to constantly have Scourge around while we walk around as after casting that spell. And finally, the aspect of apprehension provides us with additional damage against feared enemies. Now, in terms of the gear choices with tempering and also crafting, we will be going for maximum life wherever we can, together with additional toxic skin level. So plus six toxic skin level over here, and plus six over here, and you can get plus four over here, which is a hefty boost of toxic damage. We will be going with maximum resolve, together with scourge size, so we can pretty much work around and kill enemies. And you can see over here, crafted with maximum resolve and also a bit of cooldown reduction on the amulet. Now over here, I do want to mention about the socketing of this build. Notice our player here is socketing into the emerald into the pens, and he also decided to socket the emerald into the weapons as well. Now, if you think you have enough critical damage, which I think we do, we can of course go with the ruins onto the weapons and getting more dexterity onto the gears. And this is alternative. In terms of socketing for the amulets, we are going with additional armor because this translates into additional damage with the aspect of unyielding hits, which is really good for the build. In terms of mercenaries, we are going with Sobo to provide us with map hack to see where the enemies are so we can dash into them, and this also makes enemies vulnerable. We're also going with the shielding companion, which allows us to have a little more defensiveness after getting injured, which is really, really used. You're not really getting damaged over here. Now, in terms of the Spirit Heart, notice that the Chinese content creator went for Double Gorilla over here, and together with the Ruins, he's gaining additional maximum life together with Earthen Bulwark for additional damage. Now, because this is a new build to most of us, let's briefly go through the skills. So, right away, the basic skills are not used, of course, and here, one well, of the focus of the build is going to maximum level into Toxic Skin. And Toxic Skin's poison will deal damage over time, and together allow us to do additional poison damage to vulnerable enemies. Now over here we do have the counter attack over here to provide us with even higher damage with critical damage, together with armor height that is also max level, so we can have a longer duration of the increased block chance, which will translate into additional damage. Now we're also going with Scourge over here, and this skill is also max level to level 5. And here we'll be going with this perk because this seems to be the best perk, not because of healing, but rather disabling enemies' special abilities. Now over here, we are using Russian Claw as one of the mobility skills, as you're going to see in the replays. But we're not adding ranks to this, because having the Hello Queen's Quest or the Shaco automatically allows us to have this particular skill rank. Finally over here, we are going with a Devour. Now this particular ultimate is here so we can activate Supremacy. The activation of this ultimate and also the deactivation of this ultimate allows us to have more supremacy stacks, close to 30 stacks for 30% damage multiplier. Finally, having this corner skill passive allows us to combine critical strike together with poison to do tons of additional damage. Now briefly going through the paragons and also the glyphs of choice. The first glyph we have over here is Colossal are stable in the matter of the Spirit Bond, and this one, because we are stacking a lot of resol Resolve stacking, this is incredibly good. The next clip we have is going to be Spirit. An amplification of critical damage is what this rank provides us the most, so here having high critical damage is essential for the build. The next glyph we have is going to be Bane. So this is going to be one of the poison aspect glyph that allows us to have poison chances that also deals double damage over time. And after that, we have Exploit. This is a guaranteed way to make enemies vulnerable and also allows us to deal more damage to vulnerable enemies. Finally, the glyph we have is going to be Fitness. Now this particular glyph allows us to generate additional vigor while having higher critical strike damage. So there are some different takes on the glyphs and also on the Paragon board, should you guys want to follow this build. But this build has been tested all the way up to 145 for the pits, and they can clear up to this high. So if you guys are wondering, you can see all of the notes and also comments, you can see the Chinese content creator says they have cleared to 140. They haven't cleared 150 yet, but they're working towards on this build. But ideally, we're not really here for the build to do higher pits, but rather it's for the speed farming, and also for a creative build. So coming over to the replays and also additional tips for this build. You are using Russian Claw to dash towards enemies, and this can reset very quickly. So this means you're infinitely dashing, evading, or teleporting towards enemies, and you don't have to hit anything. 
the best part of this build is you're just running past monsters. And against the bosses, if the boss does summon monsters, it's great. You can one-shot the boss if it summons. And if it doesn't, you can still one-shot it very quickly. So most of the time, guys, you are running through monsters. And as you basically go past elites and also monsters, they will be dying and they will be exploding, which allows them to deal more damage to surrounding enemies than they chain explode. So this build is a chain reaction build that allows you to pretty much touch them and they will die next to you. It is a very fun build simply because it's a different take for me. I'm not shooting you not know, crow volleys, I'm just running through <laughs> like a truck that's rushing through, right? So the build itself is very straightforward. And once you guys get the hang of it, I think you will love it because of the interesting playstyle and the ability to just rest your fingers and just let the skills do the work. And the best part about this is you can see where the density of the monsters on the map is. And once you dash towards them, they will be dying in seconds. Now, in terms of the tips against the harder level boss, like pit 130, 140, what you ideally want to do is you want to surround the boss with other enemies. And once you kill the little minions next to the boss, and this is how you one shot the boss. And I think that is the majority of the highlights to kill the single target elites or bosses this way, using the explosion effect coming from the Felsaya.